Good evening and welcome to PWR Daily for Monday, December 18th. I had to look because I forgot what day it is. Frank Charles is... Welcome to PWR Daily for Wednesday, December 20th, a bonus edition because of the stack of emails. Yep. There was an executive decision made to continue to read as many as By our uh, Akbarama or whatever that guy's name is. <laughs> he looks just like him. Baraka. You know what? He does kind of look like Baraka from Mortal Kombat. The guy with the razor blade teeth. Yeah, you lost me there. Mortal Kombat. That's, he, so, you know, our producer does dress a lot like that guy from Illinois, though. I think that's what he's trying to model himself after. If you ever get a look at him, it, it is. We'll see. Uh, let's go with Daniel Simpson from Birmingham, England. Let's cross the pond. Dear Damien and Meathead, love the show. Got a few questions. Do you think AJ Styles would move from TNA to WWE? And if yes, what show would he be on? If he were to move, which I don't think will happen, yeah. if AJ Styles were to move to WWE, he would have to go to SmackDown, unfortunately. Right away, but he could move over to Raw. Of course he could, but there's no room for him on Raw. Brandon... Gazawi from Glendora, California. I'm a big fan of the show. I was thinking that for TNA, instead of having the TNA Impact replay on Saturdays, they should have it a 30-minute show like TNA Explosion. What do you think of that idea? I think that's a great idea, but uh, I don't think the numbers would warrant it. I bet you that the reruns on Saturday, where they're in their old time slot, which is where they used to be, I bet you the reruns on Saturday is actually where they're still drawing good numbers. So I don't think they would draw good numbers for a different lower type show. Paul McLean in Ipswich, England. That is across the pond. Hey, uh, guys, just wanted to ask if Finley and Fit Finley... Ipswich. The Mask. Stanley Ipswich. That was Jim Carrey's character. Sorry, brain fart. Go. Just wanted to ask if Finley and Fit Finley from the old WCW are the same person. Yeah, absolutely. I come to fight. Uh, Fit Finley, when he was in WCW, when he came over to WWE, there wasn't a room for him, so he became a trainer, and he actually was in charge of the women's wrestling department when there was all those women wrestlers, the Molly Hollies, the Jackie, the uh, uh, Miss Jackie, yes. the Tori. I mean, all those Fit was in charge of that. One more thing was Damien at the WWE Armageddon press conference. There was one person shouting, All hail, King Booker! Throughout the whole thing, and it sounded very like, like very much like him. No, Damien was actually he was actually at a Democratic convention in Illinois, worshiping his new god uh, Baraka from Mortal Kombat. <laughs> John in Ithaca, New York, writes, uh, "Hey guys, love the show. The IC title has been used well recently by Raw. I think so too. With the reigns by superstars such as Sheldon Benjamin, Johnny Nitro, Jeff Hardy, uh, well, except for Jeff Hardy. Do you believe the U.S. title can be utilized on SmackDown better as a tool to help younger performers? Who as, is the U.S. Well, champ? That's Matt how bad Hardy, it is. Sil Sylvan, Sylvan, <laughs> Sylvan, and Vito. Who is the U.S. champ? You, you see what I'm saying, Frank, I don't know. producer." Who is the U.S. champion? On SmackDown? Exactly. It's Chris Benoit, guys. All I know is that Vito still owes his cannolis. Yeah, it's, it's Chris Benoit. He's the U.S. champion. Sam M. From across the pond in Norfolk, England. Okay. My question is, do you think having a 30-man battle royal on Raw this coming week detracts from the Royal Rumble match? I think they do this every year. You mean year. the thirty, the one that they had last Monday? They, yeah, I think that's where he's going. Yeah. They do this all the time. The week before the Royal Rumble, uh, they have like, you know, whatever main event. Frank, the Royal Rumble is about a month away. Yeah. Okay. Well, the question, again, was the Royal Rumble, or the Rumble match, the Battle Royal match that we had this past Monday on Raw. This is different from that. Does it detract from it? No. No. The reason that they're on an extra hour, I haven't actually paid attention to anything else that's on across the wrestling networks, but they're trying to steal viewers from something else. That's all they do that for, by the way. It's not because, hey, you know, we got this time, we got these extra cameramen for an extra hour, we're paying the union, let's put on a broadcast. That's not why they do that. Mike Lucchese writes, hey, Damien and Meathead, just want to say I love the show. I, I know a lot of people dislike the new ECW. I heard rumors that... Chris Jericho is returning to wrestling. Do you think a lot more people would watch ECW if Chris Jericho returned 
to the WWE. Chris Jericho is not the savior I make him out to be. He would be a nice addition to the program, but he's not going to save it. Not like he saved Raw from falling in the toilet when he debuted on August 19th to uh, 1999. Uh, Boris. Wherever you are from Boris. I wonder if he's related to Boris Malenko. It could be. Boris damn near killed us. You have a lengthy email, but I'm going to read this question uh, in regards to TNA's usage of Kevin Nash. The guy is an outstanding in-ring performer. Why is he whoa, whoa, being used whoa. strictly for promos and whoa. minor storylines, not as a main eventer? That's Boris. Did you just call him a great in-ring talent? Boris. Buddy. In your opinion, uh, gr granted this is a show about opinions, Kevin Nash has three moves. One of them used to be putting his hair back. <laughs> oh, no, walking around with uh, a glass of something. Yeah, exactly. Kevin Nash is not a great in-ring talent. He's great on the microphone. Yes. Uh, he's amusing in batch stage vignettes. And he can do the jackknife. And he can do the jackknife. And he's a powerful persona. He is not a great in-ring talent. Even when he was the great Oz, he was not a great in-ring talent. I believe he also played basketball at the University of Tennessee. Yes. Jason from Long Island. I just started watching your show, and I must say you guys are very good in providing the right answers. <laughs> Is it the show you're watching? You're sure not watching uh, something else? Two questions, though. What are the odds that since the Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble is in San Antonio, that HBK is going to win it? Slim to none. Is Vince DX going to respond to the threats of VKM and make it worth while make it a worthwhile affair, or just let another opportunity for a good there's match a, slip There's by? a greater chance of HBK winning a battle royal. Yeah. Well, they don't, they have this hometown thing. It's overplayed. It's yeah. only, it only works in the video game, SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Yeah. Frank doesn't play video games. Yeah. Brian DeGraff in San Diego. Mm. You've been listening to ESPN Radio 1510 Days, 1299s, haven't you? Because we love San Diego. I believe it means a whale's hoo-hoo. In response to the question that we had... Uh, on masked wrestlers, I would have to go with Nastico from CMLL. He reminds me of a young Rey Mysterio and could flat out go. I liked uh, Jericho when he was wearing a mask for a little while, but it wasn't his mask, it was Hoovies. Jeremy and Nanut, New York. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hey guys, I Unique enjoy the show. Unique New York? Unique New York? Unique. New, new, <laughs> 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 yeah. Jeremy and the newt you guys enjoy the show and watch his office i'm unable to my question is related to tna wrestler bobby robert rue okay why did tna spend all those weeks promoting him as wrestling's hottest, hottest free, free agent and has seemingly the, the next best thing only to have him job repeatedly to eric young it is kind of odd. Because very, you got to pay your dues. Very, very WCW-like, but he was paying dues in Team Canada. Yeah. Very WCW-like. And that's not a positive. Devontae Lex in Brooklyn, New York. We're over in New York Brooklyn. this week, huh? In your opinion, which wrestling legend would you like to, to see make a WWE comeback and have a fresh new run in WWE? Hmm. I don't know if he's physically able to do it, but I'd say Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Fresh run. Yeah. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I said, I don't know if he's physically able to do it, but the question was, what WWE legend? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. And read the question again if you have to. Where's your answer to it? You answered it. No, it's, it's, it's for both of us. I want to hear your opinion because you already poo pooed Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Let me guess. Baron? No. Let me guess. Uh, 70 something years Abdul old. Little... <laughs> I'll read the question again. In your opinion, which WWE legend would you like to see okay. make a return to Define WWE? Legend. Legend? Well, according to the video game, it's anybody that puts a little stamp. Oh, wow. See, you go to video games <laughs> right away. Legends are also guys that are in the Hall of Fame. Wrestling Hall of Fame, the actual Hall of Fame of wrestling, not the WWE version. So they're all legends. If he was physically able to wrestle Bret Hart. There you go. Good answer, Frank. 
like a politician over here trying to pull an answer out of you. Jesse Smith from Battle Creek, Michigan, home of... And Kellogg's, I believe. Yep. Uh, Does it smell like breakfast over there every day? <laughs> Frank, go. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yes. Hey, guys, love the show. The greatest wrestler... Man, I try to do this really good, guys, but you got to put the, the words in the right order. The greatest wrestler to ever wear a mask or paint would be Sting. And that would uh, be the white and black NWO Sting. I agree with that. White and black NWO Sting? Or the Sting that was wearing the white and black that went against the NWO, I think is what with he's the, getting at. With the baseball uh, The crow Sting is what I generally refer to. And this is the final email in this bonus edition of... <laughs> and we still have more to read so off air. Many. Paul from Bran Banbury, England. Thanks for reading out the email in the previous show, Fan of the Week. And yes, me head, I was laughing out loud. Nice. Do any U.S. networks broadcast reruns of the 70s, 80s wrestling, the world of sport with, the world of sport with Big Daddy, Giant Haystacks, amongst other stars? Not that I'm aware of. Now, they did have, uh, I believe it was a WWE channel, um, at least in, in the Milwaukee market, where they had a classics. Uh, uh, that wasn't a WWE channel. That was actually Espen Classics, and they would show old wrestling Sunday mornings. I don't think they're doing that anymore, right. especially in football season right now. You're getting NFL films, and that's but all you're going to get. But what they can do, if you go to your independent circuit, there are lots of people who are selling those DVDs and, yeah. and VHS types. Of if you go to your indie shows, there's oh, yeah. copies of that stuff. Yeah, and Just course. like I'm out looking for WCW right now because apparently that's all that's going to make me happy anymore. Christmas was making happy. Uh, Orange Blossom Trail. When I walk up and down the street there, that I, I get real happy. Or in the red light district. Oh, it is the red light district of Orlando. All right. You know, when I went to Orlando that exact same weekend, the KKK was in town holding a big uh, rally down in downtown. That's just ironic, great. isn't it? For all our KKK viewers. Anyway, that is uh, Peter Barr Daily for Wednesday, December 20th. Stick around for the 21st edition on the 21st of December for our sorry <laughs> our next edition because i don't have it written down uh thanks for watching we'll see you soon